A large storm system is impacting parts of the country, bringing heavy rains with flooding and thunderstorms with strong winds and large hail possible, while other areas of the country find the hot and humid days of summer hanging on with all of their might. Meanwhile, the tropics are heating up, and we're going to look at all of that, including your weekend forecast, and take a peek into space weather and see what's going on up there. We're going to start right here with the tropical update, where we find a 50% chance of tropical cyclone development out here in our MDR, our main development region. And check this out. The National Hurricane Center has upgraded this from 30 to 40 to now 50% as this little wave that's represented by this X has moved off the coast of Africa. Once it gets into this region, it looks like it has a chance of development, but it's the only game in town so far out in the tropics. It's been very quiet. It's been a very quiet season so far. Gabrielle has been playing hard to get. We can't find the G-Storm, and I guess that's good news, particularly if uh, we're living in anywhere in the islands and up here along the east coast into the Gulf. We don't want to see any hurricanes hit our area, but uh, in any event, we don't look to have that happen anytime soon. Check out the satellite imagery and we can easily pick out this tropical wave, although it's not one of the most impressive tropical waves I've ever seen. Certainly there's no circulation with it yet. It potentially will acquire such attributes as it moves on off to the west slowly, but uh, some pulse convection with it. You see it kind of pulsing up. It'll wane out overnight, come back in again strong uh, later on, and that's what we're watching here, but it'll get into this area. Outside of that, really just got a little tropical wave here affecting the Lesser Antilles. This has migrated slowly west, and now we're bringing some showers and thunderstorms to this area of Sierra stalled frontal boundary that's been plaguing Florida with showers and thunderstorms on a daily basis, extending into the Gulf up along the East Coast. We see this little kink here, looking like we're starting to see the formation of a weak low pressure system, not really looking for a tropical system out of this, but certainly could bring some rainfall to the Southeast Coast in the coming days. Some model disagreement there, but we're going to continue to watch that as we go through time. Here's the GFS, or sorry, rather the, uh, yeah, let's do the GFS first. Let's switch over here first. I always like to show that first. Get the silliness out of the way before we get the, uh, you know, grown-ups at the table here. So here's the GFS. There's that little low pressure we're talking about. And there's the little low that's coming off of the coast of Africa. And boy, it just really uh, starts to get it together as we get on out toward mid next week, get a couple of contours here. And look what it does. Shoots it right up into the Atlantic, opens it back up again. And uh, boy, a little cyclone coming out of the Gulf of cold rain here into looks like a weak tropical storm affecting parts of the panhandle of Florida, maybe Alabama toward Mobile, and then it goes on off to the west. And uh, some other little storm systems affecting parts of the northeast, and that's what the GFS is showing. Of course, this is an operational model, and we're only looking at it just to gauge the possibility and, and see what the model itself is thinking in terms of tropical development. Sometimes that gives us an idea of trends and things like that, so that's why we look at it daily. Certainly nothing imminent. Here's the European, and let's see what it does. So it takes the first area and really starts to develop it. Look at this. We get on in toward mid-next week. There it is right there. You see it's kind of very, very slow, but as we get on toward the end of next week, watch what happens. Woo, rhymes it up here, carries it just north of the uh, Windward Islands, and look at that, 994. So we're starting to get toward hurricane status here, weak hurricane status. It scrapes uh, Puerto Rico and then heads up and shoots the gap between Cape Hatteras and Bermuda, curves out to sea. So it looks like the most likely scenario if this thing develops, the steering pattern on both models carries it on up into the Atlantic and out to sea, so that's good news. What about the ensembles? Well, here is the European ensemble, and you can see a couple of different signals. These are the L's that represent that wave. I've run this out to six days out. Okay, so we're six days out already, so this would be uh, next Friday next Thursday evening, rather. And then there's another little signal here, and then there's not much else in terms of tropical cyclone signals. This is the first wave, and this would be a second wave that comes off the coast of Africa. And if we delete that and then run this on out, here's what we see. We just get it on out, and you can see that first wave. Most of those go up out to sea. A couple of them scrape the islands. The second wave, some of the ensemble members dissipate it, and some carry them on westward into the islands out toward day 10, and that's as far as we need to go because anything beyond that's a crapshoot anyway. Day 10 is a crapshoot, but uh, at least we have a signal for the first storm that's pretty uh, robust, so we can say with confidence there is at least something to watch here in the near term. Out down the road, there's a little bit of a lesser signal, but still a signal, so going to pay attention to it. The GFS showing the same thing. You see that? Here's the signal for the first. Here's the signal for the second wave. And this is, again, out toward day six. And if we run this on out toward day 10, the GFS really scatters this thing out. I've already looked at it 
Spoiler alert, folks, we've got L's all over the place by day 10. No clear signal about anything anymore, except for the fact that it's likely to, we're likely to see some type of tropical cyclone develop. Could be just be a depression, maybe a weak tropical storm if it doesn't get eaten apart by dry air. But uh, likely scenarios, it goes up into the Atlantic and doesn't hit any land, and that's good news. GFS continues to show a bit more of a signal for, in terms of the ensemble suite, shows a bit more of a signal for something firing here near Central America down toward the Bay of Campeche and shooting up into the Gulf, but it's very weak signal, just a few L's up here, so not really looking for anything robust, and some of that's off the screen, you can't even see it, but uh, trust me, there's not much there to look at anyway. Here is the background state, according to the European ensemble, I'm going to roll this back, get out here towards Sunday and Monday, and look what happens out in the Atlantic, this is where we're watching, I'm going to draw it for you so you can see it. Here's our tropical uh, Atlantic. We'll get on over here toward Africa. That's what we're looking at right there. See all those oranges? Bad for tropical development. And look what happens as we go on out toward the early part, mid part of next week. We start to see whites and then some greens show up as we get on out toward day five, day six. This puts us out toward next weekend. And then by the time we get to 192 hours, that's next Saturday evening, next Sunday and Monday, look, uh, we start to see those whites fill back in with oranges, light oranges, and then darker oranges out in time, and that would be sinking air again. Green is rising air, white is neutral, so anything white or green would be a favorable background state for tropical development. So you see we've got about a seven, maybe to 10 day window where the background state looks to be favorable. The GFS shows this, the ensemble suite of the Europeans shows this, and also the MJO kind of has a neutral signal, but it's not in one of the mo more favorable phases as we get on out in time for best tropical forcing in the Atlantic either. So a lot of things working against us this season for tropical development. That's good news. And that's tropical update for today. Now we're going to check on the local forecast or the national forecast for the rest of the weekend. But before we do that, got your weather IQ question. Don't think I don't have it just because it's Saturday. I do, and it's a hard one maybe. Some of you may know this, some of you may not, depending on how closely you follow the weather and how closely you've been watching this channel. But here's the question. What is the term for the rate of temperature decrease with height? Okay, is that called a temperature inversion, a Coriolis vector lapse rate, or horizontal temperature advection? If you know the answer, type it in the comments. If you don't, hang out to the end of the show, which will be just a few minutes from now, and I will let you know the answer. But right now, we're going to talk about the local forecast. I keep calling it the local forecast. It's local to us, thinking globally, but uh, in terms of what we're looking at today, it's going to be the U.S. forecast for the next two days. All right, we're going to start here with our satellite image overlaid with a lightning display, and you can see a couple of interesting features here. There's that low pressure sort of getting its act together off the coast of the Carolinas. Clouds working into New England as another little frontal system pushes through up there over the course of the weekend. Showers and thunderstorms working through the Chicagoland area up here at this hour. This is about 9.30 a.m. Saturday morning, and another batch of rain and thunderstorms up through North and South Dakota. And look at this moisture fetch. Boy, this really shows up really, really well here on the satellite image. We've got a big trough out here and a high pressure ridge over the Mississippi Valley, and the flow between those two is just sending it straight out of the south. That's a moist flow, moisture coming all the way out of the Pacific into this area, and you guys have seen rounds of rain, and will see rounds of rain over the next couple of days. Another system just poised, waiting in the wings out here off the west coast of the U.S. Thunderstorms this afternoon possible up and down the Rockies into the lee of the Rockies into the Central Plains and also again over into the Great Lakes area and lower well, mid Mississippi River Valley, I should say, and then back into the um, Rockies potential for some heavy rain and also a marginal risk of severe thunderstorms could see a few uh, wind and hail reports not even a, a not even out of the question to see a tornado or two pop up down here in southeast New Mexico. Okay, so watch out down there folks. Also in the Chicagoland area this morning and this afternoon as that system moves through, could see a couple of reports of wind as well. Bad air continues up in Washington and Oregon where we find wildfire smoke impacting you all. And then over here, I'll drag this over a little bit so we can see it. Still in St. Louis, Memphis, uh, down here toward New Orleans, Houston, and Hotlanta dealing with haze and bad air quality. We're just not seeing anything to wash the air particulates out and blow them away. It's been pretty stagnant, hot, and humid, and we're going to see that haze continue uh, until we get the pattern to push through 
and uh, that ridge to push through as the pattern kind of changes here. I'm going to change that map around a little bit. This is the alerts map. There's flood watch out here for Colorado and Utah where we've seen training of thunderstorms and seen quite a bit of heavy rain, fog, advisories up here that will burn off later up in northern Minnesota and then just various air quality alerts around the country. Other than that, not too bad. Here's the surface map. Got that low pressure working up into North Dakota uh, this afternoon. Heavy rain associated with that going to be found in North Dakota and anywhere up and down between that area and this area down here in New Mexico and Texas could see rounds of heavy rain, but certainly going to see some thunderstorms break out later today down here, produce some heavy rain, and then back through Chicago could see some showers and thunderstorms all the way back down here toward North um, basically down towards St. Louis, just south of St. Louis into northern Arkansas, Florida, with that stationary front continues to see showers and thunderstorms. There's some showers working in later in the day up into the northeast and over into the northwest with a new system pushing in. That'll push in through the course of the weekend. Showers and heavy rain slides east just a little bit tomorrow through the front range of the Rockies all the way up and down the northern plains and then back into the northeast. You're going to see some clouds and showers hang around. Not going to be a washout, but certainly showery and cloudy and drizzly. And then parts of the southeast with a little low pressure and upper level support working back into the coast. Going to see potential for showers and thunderstorms down here. You'll find that. You need to keep the umbrellas handy if you're doing some late vacationing. Here's what it looks like as we go on out over the next 48 hours here, folks. See that big area of rain this morning working through the Dakotas back down into uh, over here into the foothills and off into the Lee of the Rockies and back through Wisconsin and Illinois. We'll watch that kind of work through the course of the day. So we get in toward later in the afternoon, a lot more shower activity out here. Thunderstorms become more numerous. You even see some of that uh, isolated activity firing up here over the deep south and parts of the lower Mississippi Valley, Florida. Still raining down in central and south Florida. A lot of that activity will decrease as we get on to the nighttime hours, but some of it will hang together because there's a low pressure that's developing, a weak low kind of forming here. You can see it spinning uh, in the radar image as we get on in toward the nighttime and toward more tomorrow morning. So you can wake up to some showers, can wake up to some rain here in the uh, western Dakotas, panhandle of Nebraska, and also out here in the Pacific Northwest as that new system moves through. As we put this on into motion for the rest of Sunday afternoon, just a few spotty showers up here in the northeast of Florida, activating that front again, and that monsoonal flow just continues in the west, and a new system pushing in continues to bring rain into the overnight hours through the portions of the stovepipe of Idaho into Montana, and continue to see rain here in the plains, in the northern plains particularly. So that's your forecast in terms of rainfall, in terms of the timing of it. The total rainfall, we're looking at really one to two inches along a boundary from New Mexico and Texas up into the Dakotas, where we're going to see that just moisture fetch just slowly migrate ever so slowly to the east, and heavy rain will be found in those areas, maybe up to a half an inch up here in southern Wisconsin and northern Illinois. And those are your biggest areas of rain. And then we get into the Pacific Northwest, going to find maybe a quarter to a half an inch as well. There is the temperature map that you can't see yet. Now you can see it. Look at that. Up here in the Northeast today, below a normal. What in the world is that? Let's get off of that. 60s and 70s down all the way down until you get down toward uh, the maybe in the mid-Atlantic. You're going to find some mid-80s here and then up uh, you know, a little bit uh, cooler down here in North Carolina. But as you get on down into Florida, 80s, 90s, shooting all the way up into the Ohio Valley and Mississippi Valley, folks. And it's going to be uh, very, very warm and muggy here. 70s across the northern tier, a little bit below normal out west, too, where you find 70s and 60s out in some of those areas. We get on out into tomorrow, 60s uh, coming into the northwest for highs and the clouds and rain. 70s and 80s up into the northern tier and hundreds in the desert southwest. There are your 90s, mid and upper 90s here along the Mississippi River Valley, right along that uh, river. You can see that uh, that's where the axis of the highest temperatures are. 70s and 60s up into the northeast, down to 70s and 80s into the mid-Atlantic and southeast. And uh, that's your temperature forecast over the next couple of days. Above normal in the center portion of the country, below normal in the west, and slightly below in the east. Now we're going to take a look at space weather and see what's going on. All right, there's that coronal hole that we've been watching. It's turning away from us, but I expect that enhanced solar wind stream to hit us any day and uh, disrupt the magnetosphere just a bit. Should put us in minor geomagnetic storm conditions, and we'll take a look at what that means from an aurora standpoint here as well. This is the coronagraph. 
I want to show you this. Boom, look at that. Big CME headed down south. And for, fortunately, that's rather that's not going to affect us as it looks like it's uh, straight to the south. But boy, you could really see that thing leaving the sun. It's a good thing, too. Looks like it's pretty long in duration. A little secondary pulse as well. So uh, that's what's going on there. Well, no Aurora viewing for this hour, but uh, over the course of the next couple of days, might see a better chance of Aurora production. Maybe you could see that approach the northern portion of the country. So pay attention if you live up there. Another big earthquake here, 7.4 off that uh, Russian peninsula, way up here in the northwestern Pacific. And if I can get this thing, it won't jump out. There we go. There it is. You can see it now. I'll drag it over a little bit. There it is. There, just uh, west of the Aleutians. And uh, that was a pretty big shake over there. I know people have felt that, but nothing big going on. A couple of little reports here. There's one in Hawaii, one up in uh, California. Nothing else going on in our neck of the woods. And so all's pretty quiet in our area. 60% waning gibbous moon. Actually, it's a third quarter now, and it's headed down toward new moon status on September the 20th. First, and that's your space weather and geological report, folks. Got to get you to answer that weather IQ. Can't enjoy the rest of your weekend until you know about decreasing temperature with height. So here's the question. Here's the answer. What's the term for the rate of de temperature decrease with height? Out of all of these four choices, the correct answer is C, lapse rates. That is the term for the decrease of temperature as you go up into the atmosphere. And the rate of that decrease, whether it's steep, meaning it decreases rapidly with height, or shallow, meaning it decreases very slowly with height, determines the stability of the atmosphere. Steeper lapse rates generally mean a more unstable atmosphere thunderstorm production, even strong to severe thunderstorm production and hail production. All of that matters when it comes to lapse rates, or lapse rates matter when it comes to thunderstorm production is probably a better way to say it. And uh, now you know about lapse rates. Now you know the weather. And of course, this is cold rain always, as always, reminding you that the weather runs 24-7. But I got you covered right here, right now, 4814. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend. May not get a video out tomorrow, but certainly we'll be back Monday with a full episode of Cold Rain's Weather World. Meantime, take care, everybody. Have a great day. Thank <laughs> you.